let's start a different sort of world um, of real analysis. And we're not going to spend too much time on this. Um, however, it's very important for us to understand this section in order to uh, understand proofs that we will be doing later on. So I would like to welcome you to logical, logical words. So uh, this section, this the, the second section, so uh, number two, will be all about logic. And I won't go into much detail and that will be left for computer science uh, lectures or uh, perhaps philosophy if, if, if I decide to do that. Um, however, for now, we will only concern ourselves with um, the material that we need to know for this uh, class, or real analysis. So let me start with the most basic one. You need to understand what a statement is. Statement. So what is a statement? So a statement is any meaningful mathematical expression which is either true or false. So this is some math which could be true or it could be false. So if it has a variable in it, then it will be true or false once you have substituted a variable for precise numbers. And this is what you have been doing in high school. So, uh, example, let's do an example. Let's say you are given uh, x is greater than or equal to 4. This is a statement. This can be true and this can be false. If you, if you put, I don't know, <laughs> pi is greater than or equal to uh, 4, then th this is not true. So this is false. So that's so, okay, so this would be false. However, this would be true. So already, I'm actually starting to leaning in towards uh, the, the true or false nature of statements. However, and I don't want to do that right away. All I need you to understand is that a statement is some sort of math. It could be uh, an equality or inequality, anything that has some sort of variable which makes the sentence. So think of the statement as a mathematical sentence, as if you were writing, I don't know, an essay and you wrote your thesis and you want to prove your thesis. And, and, and that's what we will be basically doing in this course. We will have some sort of theorem and we will be proving it. And, and normally in theorems, they are full of statements. So I don't want to waste any of your time. So let's actually, oh no, let's go back. So, so sorry about that. So I don't want to waste any of your time. So let's actually jump into the logical words, what this lecture is supposed to be about. Okay, so let me get a new page. So logical words are a, are a method to build up more complicated statements from simpler ones. So let's actually do them. So these are the main ones. And you it's easier for me to teach you about truth tables because it's, you can just create them on any test or exam that you are given. And you can just judge if the statement uh, meets the criteria. And you can see if the overall statement is true or false. Normally, what you want to do is the goal, the general goal is to find out whether the thing whether the statement is true or false. So one of the first ones and one of the main ones is not. So what does this mean? So not just changes the truth value from true to false and false to true. So if, if something was originally true, if you put a not, then it will change it to false. And if you had something that was false, by putting a not, you will convert it into true. So I know it's a really abstract right now. Let me let me do an example for you. So let's say you had x is greater than three. So in high school, or if you're still uh, thinking the old way, then you could in your mind you think of well, any some number is greater than or equal to zero. This is, sorry to three. So you probably think to it, well, this is probably x can be the set of three, four, and then so on, and, 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 and then it could be 
3.5. So it's basically an infinite set. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Anyways, so that's what you originally think of. So if I were to put not in front of it, let's, let me put that not, and then I were to say what I was originally saying. So this was true for this specific statement. You were saying that x is uh, greater than or equal to 3. So putting a not, this is the same as saying x is not greater than or equal to 3, which is the same as saying x is less than 3. So with inequalities, it's simpler to just look at the one that is not being used. If it's this, then it's going to be converted into this. If it's this, then it's going to be converted into this. If you put a not, by putting a not in front of this, you will convert it to this. If you put a not in front of this, you will convert it to that. So not, and uh, well, let me put that, x can be greater than or equal to 3 is the same as saying x is less than 3. So we can even talk about this over a line. Let's say this is 3 and previously your your this, so this specific thing was x can be here or it can be greater than this. So you can just keep going. That's what x could have been. So now when you say not, when you say not, you're basically destroying this. You're doing the opposite. You're taking this away. So if it was equal to this, well, you're creating a hole there and you're taking all of this away. You're erasing it. Instead, you're going the other way because your statement still has to be meaningful, right? So you're going the other way. So what you want to do now is, well, uh, go the other way. So, okay, that. You want to go the other way, which is this way. And this is a more graphical uh, approach to this. However, what I have just done is, well, it's not equal to 3, which, look, it does not have the equal below it. And it's less than, it's less than 3. And that's what I have here. Now, the next logical word that's really important and what we want to learn is and. So what is and? And how do we use it? So let's say we have some sort of statement and let's call that statement alpha. And then we use and we have the other statement. Statement, statement beta. So statement one and statement two is true exactly when both statement one is true and statement two is true. So I know it's a little bit complicated. So this whole statement, so let me, this whole statement, so this whole thing can only be true. So only true if this and this is true. So let me put it a little bit more symbolically. For and, if you want it to be true, then let's say you have uh, alpha and, and beta. This will be true if and only if, and I will cover that in the next video, I think. But what you want to know about and is that this will be true if this is true and if this is true. Let's say this is false and this is not true. So let's all, as always, let's do an example. So example. So n is a natural number. So let's make sure that n is an element of the naturals. And then that's one statement. And then we say and, and, n is less than 5. And one thing that I forgot to say is that you can use these as many times as you want. There's no stopping you. Of course, if it's or, then of course, try to use it once. However, it's on a test, then this could appear multiple times. So let's actually do that. So n is an element of n, so the naturals, and n is less than 5, and let's put another and here. n is greater than or equal to 3. 
So this, let's see if this holds. So n is an element of n. This could be true or it could be false. And then let's look at this more, more specifically. Uh, n is less than 5 and n is greater than or equal to 3. So how do you want to, let's say they want you to combine this, combine this in a more, uh, more concrete, com com combine this in a more concrete uh, manner. So how would this look like? You can always draw a picture. Pictures always help. So let's say that's 5. There's a hole there, right? n is less than 5. So it's some, it's probably going that way. And then n is greater than or equal to 3. So it's here. 3 is right here. And it can be greater than. So it's this area. It's this area where this is true. So how you want to write this and how we combine this, this whole statement is equivalent to saying, okay, so I already put the arrow there. So this whole statement is equivalent to saying the set of n is an element of the naturals such that 5 is greater than n, which is greater or equal to 3. So this is how you would do this. To finish this off, let's do or as well. So you are going through your textbook and you see or. So how do we work with or? So or is used as this. So statement alpha or statement beta. This this is how you would see it. You could have it repeated numerous times. However, this is how you would see it in general. So statement one or statement two is true when either statement one is true or statement two is true or both are true. So it's not the it's it, it's not the same as and. Remember how with and, in order to be true for and, both of the conditions need to be true for or. How it works is if you want or to be true, if 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 you want it to be true, then alpha and or beta, let's put it several times so that it's clear to you, or beta. So if this is true and this is false, then the overall statement will be true. If this is false and this is true, then it will still, the overall statement will still be true. And if they're both true, then, well, it's true. An easier way of understanding this is, well, you you know what or is, right? Uh, you go to the bank and the, you want some cash and they ask you which, what kind of notes would you want? So you say, well, you could give me, you could give me a $5 bill, a $5 bill, or you could give me a $10 bill for however much money you want. So clearly you are okay with either one of these. So Let's say the clerk gives you five dollars uh, worth of money with, with like notes, and and you're not going to be angry because you gave her the option of or. You said, well, you could give me either this or you could give me this, so you will be okay with five dollars. Now, if she gives you ten dollars notes, uh, again, you gave her the option, so you would still be okay since that's what this basically says. E even if one is true, then the overall thing will still hold. It's it will still be true. And if both are true, if she gives you a mixture of $5 and $10, then I think you will be even happier. And you will be overall satisfied with the with the, uh, the treatment that you have received by the clerk. Now, let me make them a little bit easier. I know they can be a little bit hard to understand. So let me teach you the truth tables, the truth tables. So these are tables shortcuts that I personally loved uh, for my exams and they are very handy. So let's do one for and and let's do one for or. Let's build them from so let me put and there let me put or there. So So this side of the thing is representing the original statement. So you know how we have statement statement alpha and then we have in this box we could have and or we could have or and then we have statement uh, beta so this this specific area um, 
is denoted for alpha, and this specific area is denoted for beta. This specific area is denoted for alpha, and this specific area is denoted for beta. So the alpha could either be true or it could be false. Again, and then beta could either be true or it could be false. So if we have a true and a true, then the overall statement will be true. If we have a true and a false, then it will be false. If we have a false and a true, then it will be false. And then if we have false and a false, then it will obviously be false. So I think you can understand this. This is the truth table for and. Now let's create it for or. So again, the statement alpha could be true or it could be false. And then it, the st statement beta could be true or it could be false. So if true or true, right, the overall thing has to be true. If it's true or false, then it will be true. If it's false or true, as I think you understand from the clerk example, it will still be true. However, if it's false and false. So let's think about that. If you ask for $5 a notes and $10 notes and she gives you a $20 note and you're obviously going to be mad. So in that case, this will be false. And that's the truth table for and and or.